A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning, fellow mathematicians! Welcome back to another video! A few days ago, or whatsoever, we have talked about the sum of Fibonacci numbers. And today we want to talk about the sum of the squares of the Fibonacci numbers. And this is what we are going to talk about today, and there's actually a really, really nice geometric intuition behind it that you are most probably familiar with because this is like the picture that nearly everyone sees when they hear Fibonacci numbers. So we are going to dive right in. So if we were to interpret each Fibonacci number, each consecutive, as being a length unit in some way, then obviously a, len a length squared and if it's just the same number squared, it's going to give us an area of a square. So look at that, look at that. It's actually quite interesting to be honest. So if we take a look at the first Fibonacci number, okay, the, the first Fibonacci number is one and the zero Fibonacci number is zero, okay, but, but zero squared is just zero, that's, that's a square with no area. Then if we take a look at the first Fibonacci number, this is going to be a square with length one, meaning the overall area is going to be one. Then what's the next Fibonacci number after that? That's going to be one. And here comes the picture that you are most probably familiar with. Okay, this is the next square. Length is one and this is one yet again. What about the next Fibonacci number? The next Fibonacci number is going to be two because it's one plus one. So two is going to be the length of a square in some way, but that's just this one right here, one plus one added together, meaning we can make a square out of that, meaning the area of this thing is four because the length here is going to be two. Now what about the next Fibonacci number? The next one is three, one plus two. Now look at that, what is three exactly? It's just one plus two, meaning if we were to make a square out of that, we are going to get ourselves an square with an area of 9 and a side length of 3 overall. And we can continue this pattern. Now what's the next one? The next one is going to be 5. Meaning we are going to take this length. This is 1 plus 1 plus 3 is going to give us 5. Meaning we are going to make a square out of that. Okay, that's, that's a rectangular square. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> it's going to give you 25 as the area with a side length of 5 overall. Now, can we find a certain pattern here? Can we find some kind of pattern that would give us a nice expression for the sum of all the squares up until the n Fibonacci number? Well, obviously, what we are going to have overall is just a rectangle in some way. What we have here, all areas added together in this picture is just going to be the whole area of this rectangle that we are having here. Meaning overall, if we were to consider this right here as being our rectangle, when we have stacked n areas of n Fibonacci numbers together, this is going to give us the whole summation right here of all the areas added together. Now what is this exactly? Well, if we were to take a look at n being the biggest um, Fibonacci number that we have used in our rectangle here, then that's obviously 5 right here, okay? 5 is now our n, so meaning overall the nth Fibonacci number, which was 5, okay, times what? is going to give us the whole area of this rectangle. Well, obviously, we are going to have 5 yet again. So this corresponds to the nth Fibonacci number. But this length consists of two lengths added together. Namely, this right here was the n minus 1 Fibonacci number. Okay, so this length is obviously fn plus fn minus 1. and there we go isn't that cool I mean this right here is most probably our solution and you can actually well prove this using induction and we can go a step further actually by expanding everything a bit out and then you can see at a glance that this is indeed our summation of all the squares up until the end Fibonacci number let us go through a few calculations so let us factor everything out and we're going to get, okay, this is fn times fn is fn squared, which is good already because this is our last member of this summation right here, plus fn minus one 
times fn. I have put it into this order just because we are going to make use of the recurrent relation of the Fibonacci numbers now. Hello kitty caddies, nice to have you here. If you remember correctly, the n Fibonacci number can be expressed as the n minus 1 Fibonacci number added to the n minus 2 Fibonacci number. Okay, 2 was 1 plus 1. Okay, it does make sense. Meaning if we were to plug the definition for fn into here, then fn is going to turn into n minus 1, so fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. Hey, and you might notice something. Hey, it's pretty good. fn minus 1 and fn minus 1 is going to be squared right now. So this is going to give us fn squared plus fn minus 1 squared plus, and now we are going to get fn minus 2 times fn minus 1. And the pattern continues. We can actually continue this. We can do now n more iterations, no, um, n minus 2 more iterations. Okay, of the same process that we did here, so substituting fn minus 1 for the recurrence relation fn minus 2 plus fn minus 3 and so on, leaving us overall with, okay, we are going to get fn squared plus fn minus 1 squared plus dot 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 up until, well, what is the last thing that we are going to get? We are going to get f1 times f2. But what is f2 exactly? By this recurrence relation that we had for the Fibonacci numbers, f2 is nothing but the member before it, so f1 plus the member before the member before it, okay? F0, <laughs> F F0. So this is going to give us f1 squared or wall. But what is F0 exactly? Well, I have said it before, F0, strictly speaking, is nothing but zero, okay? So this part is going to vanish, meaning after expanding this expression out, uh, this is also the way to use induction here, to be honest, um, we are going to get exactly our sum of squares back, and that's it! Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend, share, and like, want to support the channel a bit more, bro, just see each other on Patreon. And maybe I'm going to make a tiny little visual proof using Menem of this because it's quite interesting, actually. I'm in the next video. I wish you guys a flamble day. Don't forget to check out Flamble Maths 2. Many new videos over there. Ciao.